Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you the newest version of my speed shooter harness system. I've made some improvements again to the system, making it better. That's always my goal. So if you are interested in a system that will allow you to shoot with no weight, really on your hands or arms, without using a tripod, without using a monopod in a traditional way, if you're interested in a system that will allow you to change shooting angles from laying down, sitting, kneeling, standing, that will allow you to move from one location to the other instantly without having to fold up tripod legs and all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in a system like that, even if you think you might be interested in a system like that, I'm going to bring a lot more information about it. So, stay tuned. Okay, the speed shooter harness, version 2, version 3, I don't know, I don't remember. But this one, as you can tell, is camouflaged. That's coming. The ones I have available right now are OD Green. This is my prototype of a camouflage version. As soon as I get the material to make the camouflage versions, I'm going to offer my speed shooter harness in a camouflage version. But anyway, I want to talk to you about the speed shooter harness itself. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to actually put it on and use it. But in this segment of this video, we're going to start out by going over the speed shooter harness itself. Now, the harness, the main harness, is the main part of the system. An integral part and a very important part is the chest strap. And then the next part is the safety and stability strap, which attaches to the monopod that is used in this system. And at the bottom of the harness is a pouch where the foot of the monopod will be placed to allow the weight of your camera system to be placed on your shoulders rather than on your hands and arms. That's the principal part of it. Now, if I spin this around, you'll see that the design of the speed shooter harness is a one-piece system. There's no buckles, no, no anything like that. And the critical design um, feature is that the straps cross in the back so that the straps stay on your shoulders. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had things that I've worn in the past, backpacks and things like that, that the straps kept falling off my shoulders when I'm moving around and trying to use whatever I was wearing. I hate that. I hate when straps would fall off my shoulders. So this design, along with the chest strap that brings it in, you can do anything and these straps will not fall off your shoulders. It's highly adjustable. For a small person like me, I'm five foot six and a half, five foot seven, five foot seven, okay. Uh, and, <laughs> and you can adjust it to, to, for if you're smaller in size or if you're larger in size, there's a lot of adjustment here. Of course, there's a lot of adjustment in the monopod length that you can, that you can use in the system to make it work for you. So I've found nobody so far that has this system that hasn't been able to adjust it to, uh, to work for them size-wise. Other parts of this new system, I have a new buckle that I'm using. It's a Cobra-style buckle that attaches the safety and stability strap to the chest strap just like that and releases just that quick. I love that aspect of it. I've also added on the sides here of the straps, there's Molly straps now that allow you to attach pouches, which I also sell 
as separate items for the for the uh, for the speed shooter harness system. And what I like about that is now you can put them on here, and they won't wherever you put them along here, they won't move on you. They won't shift back and forth. I use the pouches, of course, for things like in here I have my teleconverters, in here I have my extra batteries and extra cards and things like that. So really, now you're going to ask, what are these for? Okay, well these are additions that I put in for myself because I have a motorized gimbal that I use for certain video work that I do and I have additional safety and security straps that come off of there uh, to support my motorized gimbal. And if you want something like that added to your harness, if you buy one, you can send me a note a message along with your order saying, hey, I would like this or that. Can you add this or that? I make every one of these harnesses to order. So I can probably make those adjustments for you. Just let me know with enough time to do that. Another change from my past harnesses is I'm now using high impact plastic buckles here, slides that are not metal like they used to be not shiny like they used to be, and thus they won't corrode and they won't shine in the sun, scaring away your birds or whatever. Not that they would, but I really like the OD green slides a lot better than the shiny chrome metal ones. They're quieter too. On the chest strap, I've incorporated pull the dot snaps that only unsnap in one direction. So much more secure along with the Velcro that also holds the chest strap on, so you really never have to worry about the chest strap coming off inadvertently. So these are all improvements to the harness system, and if you're interested in such a system, you can of course go to my website, www.whistlingwingsphotography.com, go to the store, and the harness system and all the accessories that I sell with it are available to purchase there. Moving on from here, we're going to go and we're going to talk about the functionality of the harness system and why I call it the speed shooter harness. I would have loved to do this outside and walk around and do a bunch of demonstrations, but we're having a hurricane right now, so I can't do that. So I'll do the best I can indoors here to show you why the speed shooter harness is so much better than using a traditional tripod or even a monopod. So stay tuned. Okay, in this next segment, I want to go over what I consider the proper way to put on your harness, get your monopod and your camera and lens combination set up correctly to go in the harness. Because I see a lot of people who are using my harness systems doing things some ways that really weren't intended to be done. Okay, so here we go. Your harness. When you get your harness, the harness should have the chest strap attached. And of course you can remove it, and I'll talk a little bit about that right now in the sense that taking this off, these snaps, and you should have gotten some documentation with your harness that told you about the snaps being basically a one-way snap. You have to pull it a certain way or the snap won't release. And of course that is a safety mechanism so that this safety strap, security strap, and chest strap combination doesn't just come popping off if all of a sudden you drop or lose control of your lens for a second and puts a bunch of pressure on here. But anyway, this being on here when you put the harness on, it positions the harness in a way that makes it easy to put on. There's a pretty obvious hole here for your head and then a hole for your arm here and a hole for your other arm here. Now I'm going to take my glasses off and I recommend those of you who wear glasses take your glasses off when you put your harness on. So all you do is stick your head through here and your arms through here and that's as hard it is as it is to put the harness on which isn't very hard obviously. Put my glasses back on. So now I've got pouches attached to my harness and your harness uh, the newer version that we're talking about here has molly straps like we talked about earlier in the video uh, on the side panels here, side straps here, to put your, put your pouches if you'd like. So that's that part of it. Now the camera and the monopod 
putting that together and getting it in the harness. I see a lot of people taking their monopod, doing this, doing this, getting this all set up, and then trying to put their camera. Uh, yeah, that doesn't work. You're gonna drop your camera and lens. We use big lenses, heavy lenses. It's hard to maneuver. Best thing to do is to put your camera and lens combination onto the monopod first, then put it into the harness. Makes it much simpler and you can almost always find a solid surface to do this on out in the field. So, the whole goal, of course, of the mono gimbal head, it is a gimbal head and we want it to be balanced. So we're gonna guess a little bit. Right now I'm just putting the mono gimbal head in the center of the Arca Swiss plate that's on the foot of my lens. Tightening it up. We'll balance it in a moment. We can even go ahead and close this up. Make sure this is loose. Make sure your foot ring is loose. Now we pick up the camera and lens and we take a look. Is it balanced? No. So we need to move it back. We need to move the camera back a little bit. Move it back. Is it balanced? Go too far. Now, is this one of those games we play? Get set just right. Do that. Move forward a little bit more. Get in there. Uh, still, still, still. And finally, right? Balanced. Now that we have that balanced, a length of monopod. Don't use, why would you use this really thin leg down here? Don't do that. Keep that in. Go up to the third leg. Nice and thick, nice and long. Now you have three, you got the foot and two of the other length here to go into the pouch. Now it's in the pouch. If this is the right length, okay, this is critical. I see so many people not doing this correctly. If this is the right length for you, when you pivot this upward, it should come right to your eye. No scrunching necessary. No lifting necessary. For me, that's about right. If it's not, add a little bit more, take a little away so that it comes right to your eye. That's the most important thing. You don't want to be scrunching and you don't want to be having to lift up because the whole point of this system is that you be comfortable when you're in the field, that there's no weight on your hands and arms, but also in the, you don't have to scrunch or anything else. Now, when this is at the right height, the camera should just pivot right over your shoulder so that you can rest it just like this, hands free. That allows you to easily put on your security and stability strap, safety and stability strap, whatever you want to call it. If it's too short, if it's way up here, it's going to be hard to do this, right? Just make sure this is pulled down and long enough and then just plug it in, bring it out front, move that over, quickly tension it up and you're ready to go. The tension here is important. It adds so much stability to the system. It is a safety mechanism as well, so that if you, oop, if you lose control of your camera and lens for a second, it's not gonna go to the ground. However, and you should, I'm saying this now, listen closely, this is not meant to hold this like this. Oh, I'm just gonna sit here and relax. No, 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 no. This is a safety strap and a stability strap for when you're shooting, but it is not meant to hold the entire weight of a system like this on purpose. So do not do this. Camera's gonna end up on the ground, so please don't do that. Anyway, 
there's a lot of adjustments available. You can adjust the harness length, so the pouch sits where you want it, height-wise. There's a lot of length adjustment in the monopod. There's a lot of length adjustment here in the stability and safety strap. So you should be able to get it set up in a way that is very, very comfortable, and that's the goal. So that's really how you set it up. Now, you'll notice that I have the knob of the monopod on the right-hand side, not over here. Some of us are left-handed, but almost all of us, I mean, all cameras are right-handed, and most left-handed shooters also use their right eye to shoot because it's a right-handed camera. There's a few that shoot in your left eye, using your left eye, I understand that. But the knob is really meant to be on the right-hand side because it allows you unfettered control of the lens underneath or on top. If the knob is over here, which I can do just by doing this, okay, now the knob's on this side. Well, now the monopod and everything is in the way. I'm having to work around it. That's not the way it's meant to be. It's meant to be on this side so you have unfettered access to the lens. See a lot of people having the knob on this side, the left side instead of the right, really belongs on the right hand side. The knob for the mono gimbal head should be up, not down. Very difficult to work down here, much easier to work up here. So with that, that's really the setup, the entire setup how I set up my speed shooter harness system. Now, once you know the length of this, and once you have the length of your harness set, there's really not much adjustment that you need to make every time you use it. It's pretty much set. Now, of course, if you put more clothes on and things like that, you may have to adjust the harness length a little bit. But you know what? I find with more clothes on, like when I, if you're in the Arctic or something like that, all it does is bring the pouch up a little bit. It's still fine. I don't really ever adjust my harness. Once I have it adjusted for when I wear very little clothing here in Florida when it's warm to where I, you know, I just leave it there. I get it adjusted well for that thickness of clothing. And then if I move to having to wear heavy jackets and things like that, all it does is move the pouch up a little bit on your, on your body and it really doesn't matter much. So anyway, that's the way I do it. Moving on from there, I was gonna head outside and demonstrate the utility and why I call this the speed shooter harness, so the utility of the harness, but we're having a hurricane, so I can't go outside. So I'm gonna do it in here with some video footage clipped into this showing the utility of this, but talking about it here inside because I can't go outside. Here we go. The speed shooter harness, why do I call it the speed shooter? Well, any of you that have done much photography like this, action type photography, where you have to hike, where you have to change uh, the angle at which you shoot, getting low, standing up, even laying down, stuff like that, where you have to move from one area to another. And I'm talking principally, I'm a bird photographer and a wildlife photographer, but sports shooters are the same way. They're going to have the same kind of situations going on on the sidelines of a football game or a soccer game or a hockey game or a basketball game. It doesn't really matter. You have to move. You've got to change your, your shooting angles quickly. You have to move from sideline to sideline or something like that very quickly. You know using a tripod is a no-go. It just takes too long to deal with those three legs that we're talking about in a tripod. You have to lengthen them all the time. You have to shorten them all the time. You have to spread them out to get really, really low. You got to fold them up, put everything over your shoulder to go and move and things like that. It just doesn't work well. It's not fast. And for wildlife and birds and sports, you don't need the stability of a tripod. 
You're using a gimbal head anyway. You're shooting birds in flight. You're shooting mammals walking. There's inherent movement and instability there. The purpose of a tripod and a gimbal head for this kind of photography is not stability. It's just really so you don't have to hold all that weight all the time when you're moving around or waiting for something to happen. Guess what? The harness system does the same thing, but it allows you to be much quicker at it, right? Okay, so getting low, standing up, laying down even, happens instantly with this system. If you have to hold it up for a long time, I showed you this before, you can sit here, there's no wait. You can sit here and wait for that owl that's up in that tree to fly for three hours and you're not gonna get tired. The camera's always ready to go, it's right here. On a tripod, sure you can do that, but what if all of a sudden the bird flies and you gotta go that way, or that way, or that, anyway, really fast. The guy over here with the tripod is fumbling around, folding everything up. You're putting your system over your shoulder on the harness and away you go, instantly. So it's so, so much faster to do that than if you're using a tripod. A monopod on the ground, that's easier, only one leg, but if you want to change heights, again, angles that you're shooting at, you still have to change the length of the monopod. You never have to change the length of this monopod once you have it set. To change from kneeling, to sitting, to laying down, to standing up, you do it instantly, pretty much. So there's a big advantage even over a regular use of a monopod. Now, talked about tripods and monopods being fixed to the ground. The feet are on the, on the ground. That can be a problem. What if you're on a boat and it's rocking and bouncing around? Anything that's on the deck of the boat, all that motion is transferred up to your camera system. So if you have a tripod or a monopod and that foot and those legs or feet are on the bottom of the boat, on the deck of the boat, good luck if it's rocking around trying to stay on your subject. It's not as much of a problem with the speed shooter because you have an inherent way to deal with the movement because this is not on the deck of the boat. Any other insecure surfaces, rocks, things like that, you're trying to put your monopod or your tripod especially, all the legs different lengths now because the ground isn't level. <laughs> no, no big deal here because you can, your legs deal with that, you deal with that inherently. Doesn't affect this at all. So that's another big advantage of the speed shooter harness. Now you're saying, okay, how do you shoot above your head? How do you shoot straight down? Stuff like that. Well, first of all, how many shots do you take straight over your head or on a really steep angle? Those aren't the best shots that we're looking for most of the time, but if you want to do it, you can easily do it with the speed shooter harness. You can't so easily do it with a monopod or a tripod, especially a tripod and a gimbal head. You want to shoot over your head? Just go ahead and handhold. You can lift this right up and shoot like you didn't even have it on a harness for the time that that bird is flying over or whatever is flying over and you put it right back down and you're ready to go again. Now, that brings up a key thing about this harness system. When you lift it up, this foot does not come out of the pouch so that you don't have to worry about lifting it up and then putting it back down and this foot not being in the pouch anymore. That wouldn't be good. The whole design of this is so it's snug in there, it doesn't come out when you shoot over your head, okay? So there you go. Try doing that with a tripod. When you're on a gimbal head, if it's up here, it only goes so far this way, only goes so far that way. How about going around and around? Okay, you're on a boat again. I do a lot of my tours from my boat. You're shooting this direction, but all of a sudden the bird flies over in this direction. Good luck doing that on a tripod. Here, just turn around, shoot any direction you want to shoot, it doesn't matter. Another great and flexible part of the speed shooter harness system and another reason why I call it the speed shooter. Again, you can shoot any level, any direction, any height instantly, much quicker than with a monopod or especially a tripod. Okay, so how many of you travel? 
You like to take that big old tripod? Again, you don't even need a big tripod for wildlife and bird photography because, again, it's not about stability. It's about just having something to hold your camera most of the time. With this, I don't even travel with a tripod hardly ever anymore. I travel with my harness and my monopod, and that's it. Now, I do take a travel tripod sometimes because some of the places I go, you absolutely have to have a tripod. But most places, that's not the case. I'd say 90 plus percent. You know how hard it is to pack up this harness? You can tell there's not much to this. It's very easy to pack it up, put it in your camera bag, put it in your, in your luggage. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't take up much room. It's not heavy. And then along with it is a very small and short, light carbon fiber monopod with a very small and short and light mono gimbal head on it. You can't really get anything that will provide you the stability and every, all the other advantages of this system that will pack up into, into such a small in space and be so light. So I love that aspect of it. It's awesome in that respect. What else can I say about the speed shooter harness? I think it's just a great method for getting stability and mobility and everything else that we just talked about in a very small and light and relatively comfortable package. So I hope you agree that that's the case. And if you're interested in knowing more about the Speed Shooter Harness System, you can go to my website and go to my store where you'll find more information on the system. And of course, that is where you can also purchase a system if you're interested in doing so. And if you have any questions about the harness system, you can of course leave them in the comments of this video, or you can email me directly and I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions that you have. So until next time, I hope you have great light. I hope you get great images. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon.